I am so excited. I um, am starting to do this area in speech therapy that no one else does, and it involves teletherapy, but it involves pragmatic language online with students in a functional and preferable way that they can engage with peers alongside the clinician or me. Um, I am doing research right now and I've started working with a couple students by parent permission going into games that are multiplayer online where they socially communicate with people auditorily, not just written typing, but like speaking to them. And the whole speaking realm gives you a, a grand expanse of like pragmatic language skills and relationship building relative to typing. The, the time frame's faster, you can hear intonation, you have pausing, all of that stuff. You can tell if someone's crying, you can tell if they're serious, if they're monotone. Like all these different clues and cues are available if you're speaking to someone and it has an emotional um, kind of content part of it too, which allows the relationships to form rather than just typing it out. So I took that into like concern. I was like, okay, the majority of kids are playing video games after school, a lot of them, and a lot of them play Fortnite. Now, given I'm a gamer myself, I love games, I, but I play not like your typical ones. I, well, sometimes I do, but I play like a lot of like problem solving ones, which I've actually, actually used in therapy, a lot of them. Very good, and I've had tried to make a whole portfolio of it. No one listens, they don't care. Well, that's okay. I think they're fucking awesome. <laughs> they're great and um, they only stimulate intrinsic motivation with students. They're challenging, they're, it's critical thinking, problem solving, planning, awareness, um, self-regulation, all these things. Because they're also having to do these, act, these the games I show them, they're having to solve them and they get stepwise progressionally harder. So what happens is then they'll hit a level where they're like, they can't solve it. Well, what happens? Emotions come up and they get frustrated. So then I kind of coach them through it and I say, it's okay, you know, have some more time or if you need help, ask me. And what happens is eventually they will ask me a question, which is pragmatic language and it facilitates, you know, back and forth exchange and working together to solve a problem. And I'll give them a clue and then they'll solve it. They'll solve it and they will like light up like and be so happy and proud of themselves. That is like the ultimate like session to me, to see a child do that, to solve something, use their brain and practice language doing it with the clinician socializing, spot on, that's an A plus. So that's one thing I do, but what I'm excited about now is more of the online social stuff and pragmatic language. I'm researching the impact of relationship development and pragmatic language skills in online multiplayer massive like role-playing games um, and how the auditory communication is important for social skill development and the use of inference to understand what the heck people are saying in those games what's important to know what's not important to know what's dangerous what's safe to disclose how to meet these people what to say when to say it because it's all in the avatar, it's all in the context that is in physical reality, right? It's a game reality. There's totally, everything's different. It shifts everything with pragmatic language. And you know, ASHA hasn't addressed this. They haven't addressed anything with the change of pragmatic language meaning. It's happening. I mean, it is already. Um, anything that's done digitally online, having to do more with back and forth email, but like literally online communication with someone in the moment, that you got pragmatic change there going on like that's that's changing it's not a written book and it's not communicating out loud in person it's and it's not it's not speaking on the telephone either see the telephone still had that you kind of still had that momentary connection but when you go digital everything changes and that changes pragmatic language and you know this could also what I'm thinking is this also could benefit students who are autistic you know, they don't like to be, they're not comfortable being outside social. I'm not. I think I have Asperger's, I, something like that. My dad does. Um, I, I hate people. <laughs> I don't like people. I, I suck at communication in general. I don't like big groups. I prefer to be alone. I'm very eccentric and like really have weird mannerisms. I don't give a shit though. 
like, you know, the thing is, is I'm more comfortable online, though, talking to people. And I've met, I've met some really cool people online. In fact, one of them is, like, a very good friend I now um, talk to almost every other day. And I visited him in real life, in physical life. Um, and as technology progresses, more and more people are starting to meet others like this. I mean, it's already kind of started happening with date websites, but, like, in terms of gaming, there's also that central hub called Discord. And if you're not familiar with it, you should be, because it's now expanding to connect people online in different areas other than just video games. Um, it's usually, usually social groups of some sort or a company that might be upcoming or they need support or they have fan, you know, anything, anything that's marketing even, they, they're using Discord for. And that's how everyone connects and it's all auditory. It's written and it's primarily auditory. So um, I'm using these games and today I just saw a student and I played Fortnite with him. And it was amazing because, you know, I kind of told him what was expected. You know, I was just gonna be showing him this. I was going to mute the background noise so that him and I could only talk. And I would be joining a party with one other person who could hear me and him. However, I would choose the person that we could communicate with and kind of go from there, right? And um, it was a safe person because I get to choose it, not the student, right? So I know it's safe to guide him through it. And he loved it. And, and like, I started asking him all these questions about like, well, why is this happening? What is that, you know? And it totally pulls out like narrative aspects of, of the student. Um, and I found out like today from from one of the things like when you start this game you start up get, like in the beginning of the, the battle royale you start in a bus it's hovering above the ground of the world and it's flying and he didn't understand it was like a bus flying and he didn't understand that you jump out to descend or to fall to a location on the ground so he couldn't state that in any way he had trouble connecting those those points in a sequence. So I was able to help him and I told him some of the words and he formulated all the sentences and like, boom, spat it out and understood it. I was like, yeah, cha-ching. Um, I mean, I, 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 before I did, started this session today, I'm like, I'm writing down all these vocab terms I can think of. Like, there's tons of them that you can target functionally in a game that they love. Um, here's some, here's some right here. Okay, let's tell, I know some of these might be a little hard, but like, I'm just like, I'm just like, thinking about them right now. So, forget, struggle, swift, distant, disarm, arrive, revive, accident, prevent, block, surprise, engage, probably, or unlikely, and you can do antonym, synonym, vary or varied, patient, source, harm or help, victory, defeat, um, disarm, destroy or build, disaster, um, effort, effortful, success, failure, achieve, assist, difficult, easy. Today we went over single, duo, trio, and squad. Totally associating the names with those with numbers, okay? So that's like linking math with, you know, the numbers and language. Um, place, rank, and then abstract concepts like place, rank, um, vitality, to transport, um, a system of performance. There's systems of performance that the students know how they work in the game, but they don't know how to verbalize it. So I pull it out of them. Um, duration, challenge, initiate, construct, a balance, imitate, duplicate, assist, um, surprise, agree, disagree, vary, ridiculous, a zone, shrink or expand, obtain, victory, um, I think I already said that. Distant or close, a priority to advance, to select, to choose among something. Direction, location concepts, before, after concepts. Um, because of in the game, there's a time frame, a temporal period where you have to stay within a circle because it shrinks and you have to, it centers you into the middle of the map. Or if you stay outside the circle, you're going to die, basically, It'll, like burn you. It's not vicious. It's like a cartoon thing. Um, and on top of that, then like every single experiential place you go to in the game, the physical setting, 
they have like real live world objects and things. So you can do actions of objects, you can name the objects, you can vocabulary, like categorize them. You can say um, what should what, what should we do with them, what shouldn't we do with them, what color they are, you know, all the all the feature stuff. Like there's just so much I can pull out immediately with this and I'm excited because Parent was on board with it and I even got his, he had an older brother and his older brother has really good headset and um, he never gets to use them. And I said, hey, do you have a headset? Maybe you can listen in, you know, and do this. He said, no, he's like my older brother does. And I said, hey, can you go get your brother for me? And he's 13, his older brother, and he's eight. So that's kind of, it's hard having an older brother, you know, in your teens and he's only eight. So his older brother came in, huge hulking brother, like double his height. <laughs> And I'm like, whoa, hi, buddy. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, I'm Mr. Sam. I'm, um, I'm working with your uh, your brother. And I wanted to ask you a huge favor. Could you please um, let him borrow your headset for 30 minutes or an hour once a week while we're working together? Um, we're playing a game, and I'm trying to um, have fun with him and teach him some stuff. And he actually was like, he's like, yeah, sure. And then the child, I'm not whatever, he, he was like, because... His brother never would have done that, you know, he wouldn't have been able to have that happen. So now helps facilitate that like relationship with them. Mom now knows, and I've taught I've spoken with her after this session about like now discussion with balancing playing the game versus like work time or family time or off computer time. Like, how is that negative? All of that is positive and all of that has to do with communication and emotion regulation and functionality and pers like everything it's being personable it's like yeah that's us that's speech language pathology right there and um you know all these chicks i'm sorry I'm, if you're a girl don't take this the wrong way all these chicks speech therapists you know they're always like they're like so against it it's always like this and that like so structured like i need a picture like to show them this i'm like Think outside the box. Like, you're boring. You don't have intonation, like me. You don't have a smile or facial expression. You don't have pragmatic language in person to just show. You can be silly. That's another thing. No speech therapists use humor. Humor is, like, so important for pragmatic language. If you don't have humor, you are autistic, basically. Or you don't understand analogy. You don't understand inference, you don't understand anything, theory of mind. Because for laughing at something, you both have to realize in a situation or a context that what you're doing is either off or it's poking fun at something or like doesn't make sense, right? That's why we laugh. Or like it's out of context. You both have to know that and then share that at the same time. And then we laugh, and then we laugh. So speech therapist chicks need to get more humor too. I mean, come on, lighten up, girls. My word. It's like, I don't have as nice teeth as the girls. They have such beautiful teeth. I wish I did. They're, they're pretty, but they're not like, not, they're not like a girl's smile. All the speech therapist girls are like, hi. And like, they're just like perfect pearly whites, which I respect. But anyways, that is my spiel, 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 whatever you say, how you call it, um, on this this idea that no one is really doing i'm trying to research it and find articles and there's no articles i mean i'm, I'm finding things related to it but not directly like examining it and testing it if i could get into a call or you know do a phd in this totally would do it so if you know anyone or could share this video with anyone who might be interested in hosting um a guy who's already got his master's of science that is interested in this subject and researching it to help for therapy sessions maybe in a different alternate medium via teletherapy but also addressing pragmatic language specifically i think that would be really cool um this is samuel and i'm all done i'm so happy i'm so excited right now um i hope this message gets to someone and they get to think about it and kind of ponder and understand what's what i'm thinking I think it's brilliant. I think it's a really good idea and it's only going to help children. So.